Hi, I'm Mrs. Hitchings, and I'm going to be reading The Name Jar to you today. This is a story about a Korean girl who moves to America, and it focuses on the culture of Korea and how that's the same in some ways and a lot different from American culture. When I say that word culture, what does that make you think of? Mm -hmm. It makes me think of holidays and traditions and maybe special food and the language someone speaks and that's a part of their family. It is so important to talk about culture because we are all different and we all come from different cultures or combinations of cultures. And it's so important to respect that about people and celebrate it and recognize it. And so I hope you see the examples of um, how that's probably happened in your own life. You've witnessed someone else's culture. And so I hope you enjoy this story. This is The Name Jar. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Unhe's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name, Unhe had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Unhe is not only leaving Korea, but she's also leaving someone really special, her grandmother. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Unhe, surprising her. Unhe looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it, it's mine, Unhe answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Unhe, said Unhe. Une, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, une, some kids chanted. No, no, Unhe corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Unhe. Oh, it's you, hey, the boy said. Like, you, hey. What about, hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Unhe hurried to get off. You, hey, bye bye, the kids yelled as she left. Unhe felt herself blush. Mm, when you blush, what color do your cheeks get? Yeah, they get red or pink. Right, and lots of different emotions can make you blush, but what is what is Unhe feeling that made her blush? Yeah, she might be almost embarrassed because they can't say her name and that doesn't feel good, and maybe nervous because now she has to go into school and these kids go to this school. Unhe stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She real Really, she was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Unhe nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Unhe. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Unhe smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Unhe pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokotos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, 
a boy replied. Hmm, why do you think Unhe didn't tell them her name? Hmm. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Unhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Unhe? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Unhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Unhe. But, but I, I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Unhe is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Unhe complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Unhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Unhe just wrinkled her nose. Mmm. Let me adjust this real quick. Okay. Later that day, Unhe and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's falafel, Tony's pizza, and Dot's deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Unhe's favorite, for soup. It made Unhe smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. Hmm. How do you think Unhei's feeling on this page? Think she feels better? I do too. And do you see that sign up there? There's the English for Kim's Market and the Korean characters, which are like letters. Characters and letters are the same thing. Okay. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Unhe. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Unhe nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Unhe, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Unhe nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Unhe. That evening, Unhe stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Mm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Susie, she said in the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. <laughs> the next morning, when Unhe arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhe took one out and read it aloud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Unhe took out the rest of the paper. Tamela, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Unhe nodded and folded another piece and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? 
Yeah, you came here on a Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Unhe's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like, or pick them all, and you'll have the longest name in history. Oh, I see Unhe starting to smile at school. That makes me think of Hendrix and how kids would be at our school. Kind to someone who comes from another place. Okay. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Unhe looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Unhe turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Unhe thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. Hmm, did you know that was going to be a stamp? The wooden block? Yeah. Sorry, let me uh, fix this real quick. <laughs> Gotta come over here. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Unhe said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names and Unhe read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery, they sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. Hmm. When Unhe got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Unhe, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the, moon the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different, America is... I'm sorry. I'm going to try that letter again. To my Unhe, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Unhe, your grandma forever. Unhe took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. Even teachers make mistakes, don't they? <laughs> hmm. I remember getting letters from my grandma and I loved it because we lived in different cities. On Monday, Unhe came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Unhe slipped it in her pocket. 
Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Unhe said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokotos's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon Mr. Kokotos came in and Ralph shouted at him. The name jar is gone, the jar with all the names in it. Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Unhe, did you get a chance to read all the names? Unhe nodded. She took a breath. Hmm, I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Ooh, what do you predict she picked? Tell me, what do you think? Make sure to tell me why. Okay, let's see if you're right. Unhe wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I liked the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Unhe means grace. Grace, grace, Inhe, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Inhe, Inhe. Unhe? Unhe said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Unhe's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Unhe. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Unhe heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Unhe. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Unhe. Unhe said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Oh my gosh. So was your prediction right? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy she feels better and that she picked her own name from her culture, which makes up who she is. Unhe, Unhe, come downstairs. Mother called up to Unhe. Your friend is here. Unhe rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Unhe breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it. But only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you, I'll keep them as a souvenir, Unhe said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Unhe. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Oh, so that's why Joey was at Kim's Market. Good. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. I'm sorry. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Unhe. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. And that's the end. So I hope this book gives you a better idea of what culture is and how that's a part of everybody and everyone should um, treasure that and realize that at times it's hard to be proud of your culture, but it's so important to your family and even to the person you're going to become. One of my favorite parts in this story is Joey and what a really great friend he is to Unhe when she came from another country. She's new at a school. She's in a new place that has a different culture. 
And so I want you to think about if someone comes to your class or you meet someone new who doesn't know anybody and has a lot of differences, how are you going to make them feel better about being at school and better about being in their new home? All right. Keep this story with you and keep reading and I'll see you soon.